Certain stones carry histories written by heat, pressure, and chemical change. Their surfaces reveal fractures, stains, and textures that are not random, but the result of powerful geological forces acting over immense time. Within these rocks, metals concentrate, migrate, and finally lock themselves into place, hidden from view, yet unmistakable to those who understand the signs. Some rocks darken as minerals oxidize, others split cleanly along internal weaknesses formed by buried quartz veins. In the right conditions, precious metals become trapped inside these structures, sealed by silica and altered host rock. What appears solid and inert can, under the right strike or exposure, reveal bright metallic cores shaped by fire and water. This video examines stones formed under extreme conditions, rocks that fracture differently, quartz that carries internal stress, and mineral patterns that signal concentrated value beneath the surface. Each mark, vein, and discoloration tells a story about how gold and silver move through rock and where they ultimately settle. By bringing together fractured host stones and quartz-bound metal veins, this documentary follows the geological process that transforms ordinary-looking rock into something far more significant, not through chance, but through physics, chemistry, and time. Beneath the surface of ordinary stone lies a silent map, and quartz veins are the lines that guide it. They appear as pale streaks cutting through darker rock, sometimes thin as a hair, sometimes thick as a tree root. Most people walk past them without a second thought, unaware that these veins are nature's own directions to hidden wealth. Quartz is one of the most common minerals on Earth, but what it leads to is anything but common. Quartz forms when mineral-rich fluids move through cracks in the Earth. As those fluids cool, quartz crystallizes. But quartz never travels alone. It is the companion of deeper treasures, gold, tourmaline, garnet, zircon, sapphire, and even emerald crystals in certain geological conditions. So when you see a quartz vein, you're not just looking at stone, you're looking at a pathway. The wider the vein, the longer the history of fluid movement. The more fractured the walls, the more chances precious minerals had to settle. The clearer the quartz, the more stable the temperature of formation, meaning minerals form slowly which is how crystals grow large. But the true signal is texture. Quartz that appears cloudy, milky, or filled with tiny cracks has a story inside. Tiny metallic specks hidden inside can be early signs of gold-bearing ore. The faint glimmer you see under light isn't imagination. It can be the same shimmer miners chased for centuries. Sometimes the quartz looks ordinary until water touches it, when wet, faint metallic flickers appear. This is where the value begins. Follow the vein with your eyes and you start to see patterns. It does not run randomly. It aligns with forces deep within the earth, pressure lines, heat flow, and structural fractures. These are the same forces that create gemstones in cavities, pockets, and voids. Inside these hidden spaces, crystals form in total darkness, slowly, molecule by molecule, over thousands of years. A quartz vein that widens, narrows, splits, and reconnects is speaking. Where it widens, pressure eased, and minerals had room to settle. Where it narrows, pressure increased, forcing fluids into cracks where they left material behind. This is where gemstones hide. Garnet forms like tiny embers glowing inside the rock. Emerald grows where silica is low, but beryl minerals and trace chromium are present. Sapphire forms when heat and pressure fuse aluminum-rich minerals in metamorphic zones. Tourmaline grows in fluid pockets where minerals cool slowly, forming rods of color that glow when cut. All of these can be traced back to fracture lines, and fracture lines are traced by quartz. So when you see a quartz vein cutting through stone, understand what you're looking at. It is the signature left by the Earth's inner heat, a memory of movement a frozen river of mineral flow. And where minerals flowed, minerals stayed. 
The true art is not simply finding quartz, it is reading it. Where the vein is pure white, minerals pass through quickly. Where it becomes stained rusty red, iron was present, and iron often accompanies precious metals. Where it turns gray or metallic, sulfide minerals formed, and gold hides and sulfides. Where small green, black, or pink needle-like crystals are locked inside, not every quartz vein holds treasure, but every treasure-bearing vein includes quartz. Quartz is the messenger, the trail, the map. The ground around a quartz vein also changes. Soil darkens. Tiny crystal fragments gather in erosion lines. The weight of stones shifts. Heavier materials settle low. When rain comes, it reveals the truth even faster. Loose sand washes away. Dense minerals stay. Small dark grains with a metallic luster may appear. And those grains can be the early form of something far more valuable. Even before finding a full crystal or metallic mass, these grains are the first clue to economic value. This is where pricing begins. Value is not determined only by finding a gemstone. Value is determined by recognition, knowing what stage of formation you are observing. Raw ore contains potential value. Cut gemstones hold refined value. A rough stone pulled directly from the ground may look dull, but when polished, it reveals clarity, fire, and depth worth far more than the rock that held it. One small vein of gold locked in quartz can become an heirloom piece of natural wealth. But none of it is found by accident. It is found by attention. And that is why quartz veins matter. They teach patience. They train the eye. They force awareness. The world hides its treasures beneath layers of silence. Quartz breaks that silence. It shows where the earth opened, where forces collided, where minerals gathered and crystallized with time. Quartz veins are not only markers of value. They are markers of geological history. Every line, every crack, every formation is a record of heat, pressure, and time. Quartz veins form when the earth moves. Two layers of rock shift against each other, creating a fracture. Deep underground, water superheated by the earth's core moves upward. That water carries dissolved minerals, elements, metals, everything the earth has been melting and reshaping for millions of years. When the pressure changes, when the temperature drops even slightly, those minerals begin to fall out of solution and crystallize. First comes quartz. Then come the minerals that traveled with it. This is why quartz veins are trusted by collectors, miners, and gemstone hunters worldwide. If quartz formed there, something else had the chance to form there too. But the key is understanding where to look along the vein. The head of the vein, where it first opens, usually contains the most intense temperature fluctuations. The middle of the vein, where space widens and cooling slows, is where tourmaline rods grow, sometimes in beautiful shades of green, pink, and black. These are the veins that produce gemstones used in fine jewelry, rings, and collector's displays. The end of the vein, where fluids escape into open pockets, can sometimes form the most breathtaking structures, cavities lined with quartz points, amethyst clusters, smoky quartz pillars, or even clear rock crystal towers. This is where beauty reveals itself in pure geometry, a silent cathedral built in darkness. Value changes here, dramatically. A rough piece of quartz with visible gold locked inside is not just a collector piece, it can be a statement specimen worth hundreds, even thousands, depending on clarity, weight, and rarity. A single flawless tourmaline crystal of vibrant green can command prices that surprise anyone unfamiliar with the gemstone world. An amethyst, once considered precious enough to rival rubies, forms inside quartz line geodes. When cut and polished, it glows with light that seems to move inside itself. This is value defined by nature not manufactured, not imitated, not replicated. Each gemstone is a story of time, and here is the most important truth. Quartz veins do not lie.
They show exactly where the earth opened. They show where mineral-rich water moved. And they show where gemstones had the chance to grow. All you need is patience, the eye to observe, and the respect to understand what you are seeing. Because the greatest wealth on earth is not hidden. It is simply overlooked. Walk slowly. Look carefully. Let your awareness sharpen. The ground beneath your feet may hold the value others walk past for decades, even centuries. The earth is patient in a way nothing created by human hands can be. It composes value slowly, atom by atom, folding pressure and heat into structures of perfection. To the hurried eye, the surface of a field, a slope, or a riverbed appears random, mundane, even repetitive. Yet underfoot, beneath the dust and pebble, there is architecture, mineral architecture written in patterns of grain, vein, and color. Each rock is a paragraph of that language. Some paragraphs are short and ordinary. Some paragraphs contain entire chapters of brilliance. Understanding this language transforms how one moves through the world. The quiet places become predictable, the rough ground turns into a map, and the so-called worthless stones begin to resemble locked safes waiting for the proper key. That key is observation practiced until it becomes instinct. When awareness deepens, the body learns to read subtleties. A sound slightly higher when stone strikes stone, a micro glint when light grazes a fracture, a way a grain of sand collects around an edge. These are not mystical signs. They are physical expressions of geological history. The same history that creates emeralds green, opals fire, sapphires cool depth, and tourmalines riot of color. The form of crystals, their growth lines, the arrangement of minute inclusions. These are fingerprints left by time and transformation. Once the eye begins to see them, the earth no longer seems indifferent. It appears generous, abundant in opportunities that reward patience and skill. There is a rhythm to discovery. First comes attention, then testing, then careful revealing. The stone responds to touch, to light, to gentle cleaning. The outer skin breaks to reveal inner order. A tiny line of color becomes a vein. A dull gray becomes a translucent core. The first glimpse is the most honest. It tells whether the stone hides clarity or whether the promise was only surface. That moment is electric. It is not about sudden luck, but about the culmination of discernment. The hands that unearth a gem do so with respect for the rock's lifespan. An unhurried peel of matrix, the patient removal of weathered crust, the soft rinse that lets the stone catch light the way it was made to. Stone teaches humility. It teaches that some of the most valuable things are quiet and resilient. Gemstones are not merely commodities. They are memorials of the forces that shape the world. They are records of temperature, fluid chemistry, and time. An emerald's color is a statement about chemistry. An opal's play of color is proof that light itself can be arranged by microscopic spheres. A sapphire's depth is a history of crystallization under conditions rare and exact. To hold such a stone is to hold an archive of the Earth's processes. Every gem has its favorite environment. Some prefer the stable pressure of deep, ancient rocks. Others form in the margins where heat and hydrothermal fluids met cooler rocks, depositing minerals and seams. Some gems grow in pockets within volcanic rock. Others grow in cavities left by gas bubbles. Knowing these preferences narrows the search area considerably. It transforms a scatter of stones into a focused field of potential. It is not complex magic. It is geology applied with patient craft. In practice, the work of finding a hidden gemstone involves repetition and careful refinement. A single promising stone may be tested in multiple ways. Gemstones also teach about preservation. Many precious stones are delicate, their value tied to clarity, color saturation, and the presence or absence of fractures. Removing a gem from its matrix is an act of conservation, not conquest. The gentlest approach is always the best. A carefully revealed tourmaline can be left still embedded until a cutter evaluates angle and potential. An opal's fire survives best when stabilized properly. Awareness of these material truths improves long-term value and prevents accidental damage. 
The market elegance of a gem rests on its visible qualities, color, clarity, cut, and carrot. That is why the initial reveal matters so much. The first view dictates the potential path forward. Rough specimen into collector piece, matrix-bound gem to museum-quality stone, or simple curiosity to a jewel of investment. The process then flows into skillful cutting, measured polishing, thoughtful setting, and careful documentation. Each step raises the stone's story into a form the world understands, a testament of natural artistry transformed by human craft. Yet some of the most profound lessons are ethical. The Earth's generosity demands reciprocity. The act of revealing a gem should honor the place from which it came. The environment that nurtured the stone is not merely a backdrop. It is a character in the gem's life. Practicing responsible collection means minimizing disturbance, respecting the balance of the land, and ensuring that discovery does not become destruction. Education amplifies this cycle. The more people who learn the signs of hidden gems, the richer the community of discovery becomes. What you've seen here is only a surface-level glimpse into how value hides inside ordinary stone. The signs that reveal silver, gold, and gemstone-bearing host rock are subtle, geological, and often ignored by untrained eyes. Understanding them requires more than curiosity. It requires structured knowledge, experience, and context. That is exactly what ProGems is built for. By subscribing, you gain access to in-depth breakdowns of mineral textures, host rock signals, quartz systems, and the environments that also produce opal, tourmaline, emerald, garnet, amethyst, and other high-value stones. Every episode goes deeper into the science behind formation, exposure, and identification, without hype and without shortcuts. If you want to see what others overlook, recognize value before it's obvious, and understand the geology that turns stone into wealth, subscribe to Pro Gems and continue the deep dive.